This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Good morning, West End Church of Christ. Good morning. Yes, we are so glad to be here. We have a wonderful lesson that's outlined for you today. It's, our text is taken from Philippians chapter 3, and the verse is 14. If you have your copy of your Bibles and turn there, if you don't have it, just look at the screen. All of the scriptures will be provided for you this morning. And we will also have some scriptures read for you today. And we want to talk about keeping our eyes on heaven. That's our, that's our topic this morning, keeping our eyes on heaven. The text reads as follows. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We have four key points that will uh, be identified for you today. And they will be infused throughout the whole lesson. But point one is remain focused. Point two is recognize and adjust to distractions. Three, strengthen your resiliency slash relationship with the Lord. And four, the church is the vehicle. And when I get down to the church, I'm going to go in a little more detail to help us on our walk with the Lord so that we can understand from a specificity as to what the Lord is actually teaching when he refers to the church. Some people look at it as being just generic. Some people look at it as being all-inclusive of every uh, facility or name that's on a building to include it as a universal church. Well, the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible does not teach the fact that every building that has uh, the name church on it or a different name is actually the biblical church. Right. So we, we have to do some investigation into that this morning, and we're going to continue down that road. On the first point of focus, in Philippians chapter 1, and the verses 21 through 24, the Bible reads, Paul is keeping his focus. He said, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. He was so focused. He was catching everything but heaven on his journey as a minister, as an apostle, as an ambassador for Christ. Paul was catching it, and we're going to share some of that, what he was having to go through. If you'll go ahead and have your Bibles ready in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, he was so focused that he buffered himself against the distractions of what Satan was throwing at him. Church, I want to just admonish and encourage you this morning that as you focus your walk, in this life, there are going to be distractions that are going to come your way. Yes. We talk about those distractions often. I was talking to a young man back in the back just this morning before we got ready uh, for service and just sharing with him, my loved one, my nephew, that you're in that twilight zone right now. Mm -hmm. You're in it. When you turn, hit those teenage years, you're going through the twilight zone. And in that twilight zone, Satan is going to hit you with all kinds of distractions. Amen, bro. Things like this, spiritual matters, yes. <laughs> maturation matters, the more important points of life matters. They're going to be dull to you. They're going to be even boring to you. They're going to be of no consequence to you when you're at a certain age. Because what Satan has dangled in front of young people's eyes as older ones as well is all kind of lights, bright lights and shiny objects. There are people who make billions and billions of dollars just from a promise, which is a lie, and bright lights. Hear what I just said. Bright lights. They are raking in billions of dollars just because they've invested in some bright lights. And people are so attracted to those lights. That's why when they go to big cities, New York, Chicago, and even down here in the country, they make it to Birmingham or Montgomery, and they see and they see the lights. 
Oh man, it, it messes them up. Just the bright lights. You go to the casinos that are built for profit. Some people, before they even get their payday, they've already spent the money before it comes into their household because they want to go hear a lot of tingling-a-ling and a lot of bling-bling. Bright lights. Bright lights. That's all they're getting out of the experience is a tingling, tingling-a-ling and some bright lights. And they've taken their whole paycheck, they've lost their family, they've destroyed the relationship with their children, they don't have a dime, they don't have a pension, they don't have a retirement, they're in debt, they file for bankruptcy, all because of some bright lights. You see, we have to be mindful of those distractions because you will be broke, busted, and in a lot of cases, you can't be trusted. All over some bright lights. Now, we have to be mindful of that. So I'm sharing with him. Right now, if y'all don't mind, I shared with him. I said, right now, what you're concerned about is your hair. Oh, that hair. We got to make sure the hair is all what it is. Teenage years, you're worried about some abs. You want to make sure you have some abs. You want to make sure that your muscles are defined because that's attractive. You think that that's who makes you you. When you look in the mirror and you see some peach fuzz starting to grow up around you, your nose, you think you're getting grown. I'm not talking to him, I'm just talking. And, and boy, that becomes something, boy. And don't, don't go in the mirror and mess around and take your shirt off and see one curl on your chest. Come on with you. Oh boy. You're grown and nobody can tell you nothing. Come on with you. Mess around and see a piece of hair on your chest. My wife told me as I digress and I come back. She told me, she said, oh, I, I like hair on the chest. I said, well, you, you're not getting any from me. I'm, I'm clean. I'm, I don't have no hair. I'm glad of it. And, and she said, uh, I said, I'm glad that I don't have to worry about no facial hair, no beard. She said, well, I like a beard. I said, well, I don't. I'm clean shaved. I know who I am. See, see what, why am I going down there? I'm not putting on blast and I'm not just talking just to be talking. The point I'm making is most young men are trying to find their manhood. Yes. So they think their manhood is equated to a mustache, some hair on their chest, and their hair or some ass. That don't make you a man, that just means you have to do more grooming, that's all. Amen. Make sure you wash and cut and clean that stuff or you're going to be walking around musty. Amen. What makes you a man is giving your life to the Lord. Yes. And the older you get, and the wiser decisions you make, you're going to come to understand that you know what? I'm glad I gave my life to the Lord because I made good decisions. I have a pension. I have a retirement. I have a place to stay. I have something to drive. I can go get a hamburger, steak, or some macaroni and cheese if I want some. I don't have to wear, beg everybody for all of my needs. I have some in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. Now, you can have all the mustache, mm -hmm. hair, abs, mm -hmm. big muscles, yeah. big feet, and everything else that go with it, but if you broke, mm -hmm. she gonna call you then, you big broke punk. <laughs> now you got all of what you thought that made you a man, Amen. Mm -hmm. but she's going to let you know now, if you don't have good decision making, and something that you can put your hands on to solve your problems and hers. Yes. You just a ab, mustache, wearing, hairy chest punk. Yeah. Amen, whoa. Amen. 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 So now, so I said, DJ, where are you? Did you lose your place? No, ma'am, no, sir. We're talking about focus. Yes. And we're talking about avoiding distractions. So when it comes down to young people, Avoiding those distractions. You have to be mindful of the distractions that are out there. Come on with Social media, yeah. Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, and everything else. Nothing but distractions. I have to ask the Lord to forgive me sometimes because I get sucked into just 
flipping through, looking at some of all those crazy stuff that people do. And it's nothing but a, listen at the word of it, tick tock. It's taking time from what you should be doing. Amen. And when I realized that I've been here fooling around with this thing for 30 minutes or even an hour or something, I said, Lord, please forgive me. I cut the thing off. Because Satan took time away from me. Nothing vulgar, nothing like that. But the time was lost. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm getting over. Amen. And so we are all susceptible to being distracted. That's where Amen. I'm going. Yes. Yes. So now, distractions. Paul had all kinds of distractions. In 2 Corinthians, and the chapter is 11, picking up with verse 23 through 30, the book says what? Are they ministers of Christ? Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I speak as a fool. I am more. I am more. In labors more abundant. Come on. In stripes above measure. Come on. In prisons more frequent. Come on. In deaths all. Come on. Of the Jews five times received our forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Come on. In the journeyings often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils of the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in, in perils among false brethren. Come on. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Come on. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Read. Who is weak, and who am I not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? In verse 30. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. Paul had all kinds of distractions. I dare say any of us will have to go through the distractions that he had to go through. When you read that account, it should make every one of us in here ashamed that if we have allowed small, minute things, hear me now, I'm not disparaging your pain. I'm not disparaging your problems. I'm not disparaging the things that you have to go through emotionally. No, I'm not disparaging that. What I'm doing is reading the Bible to help put in perspective that when you look at what this brother focused his mind to go through and to, and to defer the distractions that were coming his way, put them now in context to what you're going through. Yeah. Does it even come close? No. 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 You see, so the things that we are, are, that Satan has us deceived thinking that we're really burdened down and oh, my life is so hard and tough. We, if we don't, we, if Paul were here, he'd tell all of us to get a grip. Amen. None of you have been through what I've been through. Amen. Amen. None of us have been beaten with rods five times. Shipwrecked, left out in the sea a night and a day. You don't know if a big fish, shark, or whale or something going to come and, and nibble on you while you're out there floating in the water. I mean, to think about what he went through is, is astounding. But Paul, why did you do it? Yes. Because I kept my eyes on heaven. Amen. See, Paul was thinking about heaven the whole time. And we have to keep our eyes on heaven. Yes. I don't care what we see these crazy politicians do. Right. I don't care what we see these devils who, who are rich do. I don't care what we see these people who are worshiping Satan and carrying out all of this witchcraft do. Keep your eyes on heaven. Amen. 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 When you see your brothers and sisters falling weak, reach down and pick them up and help them. Yeah. When you see brothers and sisters in the church acting a fool and acting foolish, speak to them, right. correct them, right. hold them accountable, right. and steer them back in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Right. Keep them in the right respect and help them to, to march on the king's highway. That's what we have to do. We're all trying to make heaven our home. Amen. So when a person falls, help them get back up. Yeah. When a person is discouraged, encourage them. Mm -hmm. When a person is not doing what they need to do, don't you join in with that nonsense that right. they have going. Amen. Pull them on over to the right. Amen. That's what that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it to heaven. Amen. In order to make it to heaven, we're going to have to strengthen our resiliency and we're going to have to strengthen our relationship with the Lord. Strengthen our resiliency. Preacher, you, you talk on this all the time. Yes. Because we are all going to get punched in the mouth. All the time. We are all going to get punched in our gut. 
we are all going to get knocked down, pushed down, kicked down. Yes. Somebody, metaphorically, you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we are all going to have to deal with life's punches. Amen. Yeah. Whether it is coming from exterior forces, like Paul was talking about, or whether it is internal with what we have to deal with in the mind. Right. Yeah. And let me say to you, as I go by resiliency and relationship with the Lord, pay your own mind no mind. Mm -hmm. Pay your own mind no mind because your mind is wicked. Amen. Your mind is corrupted. Yeah. Your mind is evil. And you have two men within you. You have every one of us have at least two. Yeah. We have at least two. There are two personalities within us. Nice. Two whatever you want to call it. Now people say I don't I don't believe in and uh, I, don't, I don't believe I have multiple personality disorder. Well, just because you don't believe it Amen. don't mean that you don't have it. Amen. Everybody in here has multiple personality Amen. disorder. Amen. And you have at least two. Go ahead. Some looking at me funny. Go ahead and get for me Romans. Preach. Go ahead and get for me Romans chapter 7, I believe it is. Yes. Get for me Romans chapter 7. Let me show everybody in here and that's listening by way of YouTube that we all have multiple personality dwelling within our right. mind. So when your mind is talking to you and telling you that you're ugly, your mind is telling you that you're this, your mind is telling you that you're that, or your mind is telling you that you're not something, pay your mind no mind. Amen. And somebody said, well, DJ Net, my mind just afflicts me, it troubles me, and I, I, I wrestle to try to get these thoughts out of my head. Listen, <coughs> wasted time. That's nothing but distraction. Amen. Somebody said, but if the Bible says, so is a man thinking, so is he. So doesn't that make it something wrong with me? No. That's talking about a person that's willfully thinking on foolishness and meditating on it. The part that I'm talking about that we all have to battle with in this life is that just like the birds that fly overhead, you can't stop a bird from flying. Nor can you stop foolish thoughts from entering into your mind. And, and let me tell you, there'll be some crazy stuff. You'll be thinking something is wrong with you. What, where did this come from? No, nothing is wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with you. What happened to you happened way back in the beginning Amen. of time when Adam and Eve partook of that fruit. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to you. Amen. And, and Satan then started bombarding the human mind with all kind of crazy stuff. So you're not crazy. Nothing's wrong with you. So I said, well, what do I do? Stay in the word of God. Amen. The Bible said uh, wisdom is the principal thing and get wisdom. But in all thy getting, make sure that you get an understanding. Don't spend all your time wrestling and battling and trying to get this mess out your mind. No, you're just spending useless and wasteless time. Amen. Let the Lord right. and the evil, let them battle it out, Amen. and you go on and leave. Amen. I'm trying to help somebody. Yeah. So I said, Dejanette, I, I, I just don't believe. I, I believe that when I gave my life to the Lord, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost, and I'm just on my way to heaven. I don't have these issues. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, let's get a man that had the Holy Spirit dwelling in him and that met Jesus on the Damascus road. Let, let him tell us what was going on with his mind. And if it was going on with his mind, get from it now. Verse 14, Romans chapter 7 and the verse is 14. The book says what? For we know that the law is spiritual. Come on. But I am carnal, sold under sin. Read. For that which I do, I, I allow not. That which I do, I allow not. For what I would, for what I would, that do I not. That I don't do. Read. But what I hate, that that I hate, that do I. That I do. If then, if I, then I do that which I would not. I do that that I don't want to do. I consent on, under the law. I, I consent unto the law that it is good. Read. Now then it is no more. Listen. I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. Paul. See, Paul had enough spiritual discernment within himself to know mm -hmm. that the stuff I do, I don't want to do that. He said, but I know that it's not me that's doing it. Right. It's that other man. Amen. It's that bastard that's in there Amen. causing me problems. Right. See, it's him that's getting me to do this nonsense. Right. I don't want to do it. Right. I don't want to think this way. I don't want to do this. Amen. It's another man in there. Amen. Amen. Now, see, some of us, we don't know this. And he, he had enough sense in verse 17 to say, Now then, it is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. I'm trying to help God's people. I'm trying to help you keep your eyes on heaven. 
So when Satan is coming after you, see what he wants you to do, he wants to bombard you. We're going to read some more. He wants to bombard your mind, keep you in a state of confusion, and then get you to believe that going to heaven is too hard and that God is not happy with me. And so then when you take on what Satan is deceiving you to believe, then now you start to take on feelings of unworthiness. Yes. I just dropped a bump. Yes. Satan then gets you the feeling as if you are unworthy. I'm a Christian. Then some other devil come along and say, I thought you was a Christian. I am a Christian. That's the reason why I'm having to go through this nonsense. You understand? So you don't allow yourself to condemn you, and you don't allow other ignorant people who don't understand the battle to condemn you. Amen. Read. 18. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Read. For to will is present with me. Come on. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Paul. Paul said, no good thing dwelleth in me, in the flesh. And, and how to perform that which is good, I find not. He said, for I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. He understands the battle that he's in. Get the next verse. For the good that I would do, listen, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Read. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Read. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Come on. For I delight in the law of God as the inward man. Come on. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. Come on. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Pause now. Paul said, I realize that that other spirit in me is looking to bring me into captivity. You see that? See, all he wants to do is captivate your mind. He wants to hold your mind captive. He's putting spiritual handcuffs and shackles on your mind. And you'll walk around free as a bird in Jesus, but not realizing that you've been handcuffed by Satan. And see, if you walk in that handcuffedness, if you walk in those shackles, mm -hmm. you won't even be able to enjoy the beautiful, sunshiny day that God is blessing us with yeah. because he has captivated your mind. Yeah. But watch who he's going to depend on. Get the next verse. Oh, wretched man. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from who the body of this Who shall death? deliver me from the body of this dead? I thank God I through thank Jesus Christ. thank God through Christ Jesus. Yeah. So then, with the mind I myself. So then, I with the mind myself. Serve the law of God. Serve the law of God. But with the flesh, but the law of sin. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Yes. yes. See, God has us covered. Yes. yes. He understands all of us. He understands us. That's why he came down from heaven. Lived in the flesh among mankind. He knows the battles of the mind, spirit, and the flesh that all of us are having to go through. And that's why he's our loving Satan. He's that sweet I know. He's the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. He is that sweet lamb of God. Yes. He is the rose of Sharon. He yes. is the lily yes. in the valley. Amen. He is the lion of the tribe called Judah. He is that bright and morning star. Yes. He is that wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince Amen. of peace. Yes. He understands us. I just had to, that wasn't in my notes. I, had, I just had to help you with that. So that you can understand that you're going to be punched, slapped, kicked, brutalized by Satan. And it is all simply to bring about a distraction to keep your eyes off of heaven. And to get you to focus down here on your own situation. And then 
in that way, it's going to strain your relationship. Yes. No. Develop some resiliency. Yes. You're going to have to learn. If you watch MMA fighters, boxers, and so forth, they call, they call, they hire sparring, sparring partners. Yes. Mm -hmm. That sparring partner is to get in the ring, mm -hmm. wrestling match, karate, contact sport, whatever, and to beat and beat up and punch on the person who's going to compete in the boxing match. Yeah. What is he doing? He's building a resiliency. Mm -hmm. He's learning how to take a punch. He's learning how to get knocked down. He's learning even how to get knocked out in some cases. In some cases, the sparring partner, uh, Muhammad Ali's sparring partner was Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes went on to become the heavyweight champion of the world. So Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes, is one of the best fighters in the history of the fight game. He knew all of Ali's moves and so forth. He was working Ali over through the years, but he was preparing Ali to be a good fighter. So do you not think that Ali and some of the other ones got knocked out in sparring? Yes. See, you're going to get knocked out in sparring. You're going to get hit in sparring. Mm -hmm. But what you have to learn, and what I'm teaching you as your minister, is learn to take a punch and bounce back. Because that's all a part of the game. So when you hear people say, oh, I just want to come to church and everything be lovely and just go back home. No, that's not church. That's not the church of the Bible. Amen. That's Satan deceiving you thinking that that's church. No, you need to come to church and see all of the nasty stuff that's in this hospital. And some folk going to be foolish. We studied about it in Sunday school today. They're going to be foolish in the church. They're going to have church members that's going to talk about you, do stuff to you. All that. You're going to have to learn to take a punch and get back up. Amen. 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 You got to know that. Amen. Amen. You, that's right. You can't be cowing down. You have to understand that. Now, as we get to resiliency and relationship, we go back now to the Old Testament to find that out. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, the book says what? All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. Read. That ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. Come on. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness. Come on. To humble thee. To humble thee. And to prove to thee. To prove thee. To know what was in thine to heart. To know what was in thine heart. Whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Whether thou would keep my commandments or not. See, all of that was a test for them. But they spent, hear me church, they spent so much time complaining, murmuring, and grumbling, and being upset with God and with God's leadership, Moses and Aaron, that they couldn't even receive the lesson that God was trying to get over to them. The lesson was, learn to be obedient, get some discipline within your walk, Learn the standards by which I'm giving you. Walk in them. Be resilient. Stay humble. Because when you cross over into the promised land, it is going to be blessings that, man, you've never seen before. But he had to prepare them for the blessing. Church, are you allowing God, through experiences, good and bad, positive and negative, to shape you for tomorrow's blessings? Yes. Or do you spend your time grumbling, <laughs> complaining, crying, belly aching, and pointing fingers? Are you going to stay wounded or are you going to become wise? Amen. Wise. Amen. Now, the church is the vehicle. Yes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and the verse is 24, the Bible says, Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. Notice that's in red. Even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power. Now, I want you to take your Bibles and turn to that chapter, book and chapter. Now, Paul referred to the end. The end is coming. The end of time. Then cometh the end when Jesus the Son is going to deliver the kingdom back up to God. Now, that's the vehicle. If someone said we are going to take a trip to Africa, to make it there, you have to get on this plane that's going to Africa. 
You have to get on that plane that's going to Africa. That is the vehicle that's going to take you to the destination that you want to go. Now, a lot of people are getting on other planes going to England, Ireland, Switzerland, Australia, Brazil, South America, and still saying that they're going to make it to Africa. And they said their reasoning is any plane will do. You get on the plane of your choice. All the planes are going to Africa. Am I in the house? Yes. yes this is what people are saying. I'm going to make it even plainer for you. This is what people are saying about the church. No go. They are saying all the churches are going to take me on back to heaven. No, all of them. No, no matter what foundation they've been built on, no matter what their creed, doctrines, or standards are, no matter what the name, all of them are going to take me to heaven. Now, this is what people are teaching. Now, but the Bible does not teach that. Let me read it again. Then comes the end. This is it. When he, who's the he? Christ, shall deliver the kingdom, what? Back up to God, the Father. Now, doesn't it make sense to find out in the book Right. That was left us Amen. as to what vehicle is identified in this book. Amen. It is somewhat foolish, and I'm not being demoralizing. Come on with it. For somebody to claim to be a follower of Christ. Hear me. But they are looking to get in vehicles that Christ did not even identify in the book. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Now, that doesn't even make good sense. No, it doesn't. But this is what people are doing. Verse 9, I want to show you that when Paul is talking in 1 Corinthians 15 and 24, talking about the kingdom, notice what else word is synonymous with the kingdom. Verse 9. Read. For, I, for I am the least of the apostles. For I am the least of the apostles. That am not meet to be called an apostle. That is not suitable to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. Because I persecuted the church of God. Now, earlier before he got to verse 24, he referred to the church of God. That's what it is referred to all throughout the Bible. The church of God, the church of God, the church of Christ, the church of God, the kingdom, the house of God, the household of faith. That's what it is referred to. Now, where are we getting Catholic? Let me, let me go ahead and be more specific. Where are we getting Church of England? Where are we getting Lutheran? Where are we getting Episcopalian? Where are we getting Presbyterian? Where are we getting Methodist? Where are we getting Baptist? Where are we getting Jehovah's Witness? Where are we getting that from? It's not in the Bible. Jesus did not speak of it being those. Where are they coming from then? They are man-made. If we cannot see that, something is wrong. Now, he referred to it as the kingdom and then he referred to it as the church. We're going to deal with that just a little bit more. In Matthew chapter 16 and the verses 18 and 19, listen again. It's on the screen. They are synonymous terms. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. There it is. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Not them, not those, not anyone will do. I-T, it. Genuine, definite article. And I will give unto thee the keys, here it is, of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Those keys were the means of entry that the Lord gave. Amen. Paul, Peter, and none of the apostles had the ability to, to, to say whatever they wanted to say, and those were the keys. No. The keys were the words by which he left them to say. Amen. That's the key to open the door to get in. Amen. Now, let's jump now to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and 17 and also verse 20. What I'm establishing here is that from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 24, under the title of the church is the vehicle, Paul referred to it as the kingdom of God being delivered back up to heaven. What I'm also showing you in these verses under that is that the church is the kingdom and the kingdom is the church. This is what I'm establishing. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 and also verse 20, Paul had to deal with a problem that was in the kingdom or in the church. For this cause I have sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Then when you continue to read on through that, you get down to verse 20. He says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So now he uses two synonymous terms again, the kingdom. And then as you read on down, he's talking about the church. Do you see that? Yes. All right. So I wanted to establish that the kingdom is the church and the church is the kingdom. And we have to get in the kingdom of God. It's also referred to as the church of God, the church of Christ. Somebody said, well, preacher, can you explain that? Because I've gone around and I've seen different signs. One said church of God and one said church of Christ. What's the difference? Well, let me show you the difference. Get from the Acts chapter 20 and the verse is 28. In Acts, this is also in our concluding text, but I want to show it now as we're going by it, as we're getting ready to land this plane. Amen. <laughs> Acts 20 and 28, and I want to show you that when it's talking about the church of God, what it's really talking about. In Acts chapter 20, and the verse is 28, the book says what? Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Take heed to therefore flock, unto yourselves and to all the flock. Over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. To feed the church of God. To feed the church of God. Which he has purchased with his own blood. Now there's the answer which he purchased with his own blood. So out of the Godhead, you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, questions as we go by this. Was it God the Holy Spirit that died on the cross and shed his blood? The answer is no. Was it God the Father who came down out of heaven off his throne and died on the cross and shed his blood? The answer is no. But was it God the Son who came down a body thou hast created me from the dust of the earth, O God, to do thy will. Jesus, Yeshua, Joshua, Joseph, whatever term you want to refer to him as, came down and lived in the form as a man. And they took him and did to him whatever they wanted to do. They beat him, they destroyed his poor body, and hung him on a cross. It was him to whom was shedding blood before he got to the cross. It was him that was shedding his blood profusely while on the cross. And while on the cross, the book said they took a sword, an old cruel soldier, and stuck it in his side, and out came blood and water. Yes. Amen. It was the sun. So when the Bible speaks about the church of God, it's talking about the sun. That's right. still talking about Christ. So in the book, the church of God and the church of Christ are the same thing. Now, now that that is established, let's conclude. Let's go to the book of Revelations, chapter 21. The book of Revelations, chapter 21. We are trying to save souls. Yes. And if you are not a member of the church that you can read about in God's book, I'm encouraging you with everything that I have. To take another look. Yes. Satan is a deceiver. Yes. And he comes to imitate. But he cannot duplicate. Yes. So what he did was. As we get into the book of Revelation. He said if I can't beat him. I'll join him. And when you read in Acts chapter 8. And Acts chapter 9. Satan did all he could to destroy the church of Christ. But in trying to destroy it, he caused the people to fan out, and it grew. It grew in them. So he took a step back and said, wait a minute. What I'm doing is having the opposite effect of what I desire. I'm not destroying it. I'm making it grow. So Satan said, I'll tell you what. If I can't beat him, I'll join him. And he got in the church building business. And that is why, to this very day, it has been very effective. His deceit has been very effective. And people are so confused now, they, they will tell you, uh, I don't know what church I'm supposed to go to. You see that? That all came from the devil. But God said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, God is not the author of confusion. 
but of peace, as in all the churches of the same. The church of God, the church of Christ, is the one that's the vehicle to take us on back. Now, let me show you the church in heaven as we go home. In Revelation chapter 21, picking up with verse 9 through 14, I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to come through and pull out a few things, and the lesson is yours. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of seven plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come here, and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. I want you, with me reading that, to go ahead and have your Bible uh, notated in Ephesians chapter 5. Go ahead and just have your finger on that place. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the twelve gates twelve angels, and names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Make another notation in your Bible to be ready at Acts chapter 7. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And in the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Have your Bibles ready for Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. And in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now, let's go back up and parse this out and the lesson is yours. The Lord is showing John the Lamb, the bride of Christ. That's the church. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 23, Ephesians chapter 5 and the verses 23, the book says what? For the husband is the head of the wife. For the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. And he is the savior of the body. Read. Therefore as the church is subject unto Christ. Therefore as the church is subject unto Christ. So let the wives be to their own husbands. So let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything. Read. Husbands love your wives. Husbands love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church. Even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself and for gave it. And gave himself for it. Now jump down to verse 32. Let's see what Paul is really talking about. This is a great mystery. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning but Christ. But I'm speaking concerning Christ. And the church. And the church. You see, as he was giving the analyzation or the comparison between a husband and a wife. He's not dealing with just a husband and a wife. He's dealing with the church and Christ. Now, I have one question for you. This is also what people want to say when it starts talking about church. They say, well, Brother Dijonette, I hear what you're saying, and, and, and your speech is pretty compelling, but, but I was always under the impression that all of the different churches made up the biblical church of Christ. The Catholic, the Church of England, the Baptist, Methodist, and so forth, I was under the impression that all of them made up the Church of Christ. No. Now, <clears throat> if I were to ask Sister Hayne, Sister Hayne, will you stand up? I'm going to ask Sister Inez and to stand up. I'm going to ask Sister Stacy to stand up. And everybody else in here is kin to me. Sister Carolyn, stand up. And Sister Jackie to stand up. Now, according to the logic of this world, that all of these women all belong to me. And they make up, and they make up my one wife. Do you see how foolish that sounds? Yes. Call your name out when I come to you. Helen Hayes. Ideas Rocky. Carolyn Abercrombie. Stacy Fox. Now, all of those different names, those are different churches with all those different names. Call your name. Jackie D. Jarnett. Now, 
That's the real name. <laughs> now, did all of those different names, different heights, different, 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 do they make up my one wife? No. Yeah, that's plain to see, isn't it? Yes. Now tell me, thank you, sisters. Tell me how all of these different churches, under all these different names, make up Christ's one bride. They don't. They don't. But this is what Satan is teaching. Now, so as the, the writer here, as the writer in Revelation, John is writing, he's seeing the lamb. He's seeing the lamb's bride, his wife, in verse 9. Now, as we come on down, <clears throat> let's look at verse 12 now. And had a great wall high, and it had 12 gates. And at the, 12, at the gates, 12 angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now those 12 tribes, Acts chapter 7 and the verse is 38, those 12 tribes over in the Old Testament, they also were the church that was in the wilderness. The church of Christ is nothing new. The church of Christ, as you can see, started in heaven. It came down from heaven out of the clouds to the earth. Stay in Revelations chapter, the chapter with the book we're in. Let me show you. Stay in chapter 21. Now, I want you to see here in verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. See, the church of Christ began in heaven. You, you have to track the church you are in all the way back to heaven. If you come out of a Baptist church, you're going to have to find, you're going to have to track it all the way back to heaven. Amen. And I use Baptist, not to pick on the Baptist, but because that's something I grew up in, and that's something most black folk in the South are, are religious. Mm -hmm. Baptist. Amen. And you are Baptist, not because you know any better. Fact of the matter, you're Baptist out of your own ignorance. And that's not ignorance from a standpoint of demoralization. That's ignorance from a standpoint of not knowing. Right. When you really go back and understand denominationalism, it's come, most of it came out of London, England. That's where the Baptist church started from, out of London, England. It broke away from the Church of England because King Henry VIII wanted to divorce his wife and marry his girlfriend. And the Pope said, no, we're not going to allow it. So he said, bump you, Pope. I'll break away and I'll start my own thing and I'll call it the Church of England. So from the Church of England, then the Baptist church broke away out of that in 1600 something, very early, 1608, 9, something like that. And they started what is referred to today as the Baptist church. That was a European organized religion. And let me show you something, black folk. <clears throat> they used that denomination to imprison and enslave you. And so when I hear black folk hollering, I was Baptist born and I'm going to be die and be Baptist dead, you are foolish and you don't know what you're talking about. Amen. They used the religion to keep you shackled and in chains. Even so much so that there was a, after the Civil War, let me give you a little history. This ain't in my note, but I got to give it to you. Y'all don't mind, do you? Let me help you. When you hear people referring to themselves today as Southern Baptists, and I hear black folk running around talking about, I'm a Southern Baptist, you don't know what you're talking about. I know you don't know what you're talking about. Because the reason why, there was a great divide after the Civil War. And after the Civil War, after the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, then there was a, a convention to, to to say, listen, we need to free these slaves. Mm -hmm. But there was a group of people that said, no, we're not freeing these people. So they broke away from the Baptists and started their own thing because they wanted to keep slavery alive. And guess what they called themselves? Southern Baptists. Mm -hmm. And then I hear black folk in their ignorance talking about they're a yellow dog Democrat. I'm a Democrat. 
The Democratic Party has made a fool out of black folk for so many years. And when you go back and do the history to learn what has transpired in this nonsense, you'll be ashamed to say you ever called yourself a Democrat. But see, these are things you don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And you've taken ownership of it, and you'll die and kill another man to hold on to your tradition, not knowing that the whole term of being a yellow dog Democrat is those old Southern racist, bigot, slave owners said, I'll vote for a yellow dog before I vote for a nigga. Come on with me. See, I'm, 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 I'm schooling you. So when you don't know this stuff, and you are so hell bent, because that's what it is, on remaining what you are religiously, because you've equated being a Baptist and being a Democrat as being black. <clears throat> and we're just as ignorant and foolish as we've been deceived to be. Drop that, man. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. This is why I school you. Preach. This is why I teach you. And this is why I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. I'm just greedy. Amen. Amen. Now, in Acts, I didn't forget where I was. In Acts chapter 7 and the verse is 38. What did the apostles, uh, the uh, 12 tribes represent in the Old Testament? The book says what? This is he. This is he. That was in the church of the wilderness. That was in the church where? In the wilderness. The church where? In the wilderness. The church where? In the wilderness. In the Old Testament. You don't have to go no further. In the Old Testament, when they were out there in the wilderness, that was the church of Christ that came out of Egypt, that came through the Red Sea, that was assembled there on the Mount Sinai in the wilderness, that was the Church of Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Church of Christ hadn't just got here, my friends. Yeah. It's been here. Amen. Now, this is what, let me help you, this is what John the Revelator is seeing in Revelation chapter 21. He's seen the church of Christ that's back in heaven with the Father. That's built up on the foundation of the apostles. Now that's the next one we're going to get to, the apostles' foundation. And then the lesson's going to be yours. Y'all don't mind it. Now drop down to verse 14 in Revelation. See, I don't know, I don't know as you're turning, I don't know how people are coming up with all these names that are foreign to God, foreign to the Holy Spirit, foreign to Jesus Christ and foreign to the apostles and then claim and go make God accept. In verse 14, in verse 14, the book says what? And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them the names of the 12 apostles. And in them were the names of the 12 apostles of, of the who? Lamb. Of the Lamb. Now, all right, so they are the apostles. <laughs> There are the apostles, right? right? Now, let's get from it now. I told you to turn to Acts chapter 2 and the verses 42. You see, people now who are saying that the Bible can't be trusted and it's been tampered with and all that, I, I, I won't argue with any of that because Satan will try to do whatever he can do. Right. But let me show you what Satan messed up in tampering with it. Even with the King James, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't mess up enough stuff in it. <laughs> See, Constantine and and and, and uh, Theodosius, Constantine mainly, when they made Christianity, quote unquote, the official religion of the Roman Empire. He did it for political reasons. So in doing it for political reasons, he was doing it for political motivation. He, they cared nothing about the religion. They cared nothing about the Christ. They cared nothing about the doctrine. Remember when Paul was being tried? Remember when Jesus was being tried? The Romans said, this doesn't mean anything to us. 
We don't see where he's done anything that's worthy of death. The, the quote-unquote Jews say we have a law, and by our law, he ought to die. The point I'm making with that, Pilate said, I find no fault in the man. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, he's free to go. I'm showing you the Roman authorities, their mentality and mindset when it came down to Christ and the religion. They didn't care anything about it. Now, so what they forgot to take out of the book or manipulate <laughs> was first, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul, and love thy neighbor as thyself. What they forgot to mess up in the book. See, they wasn't thinking. They forgot to take out the vehicle back to heaven. And that's talking about the church. The church of Christ. See, they wasn't even thinking. This is the main thing. Jesus told them, my kingdom is not of this world. So whereas you all are concerned about this earthly stuff, I'm not concerned about it. My whole deal is to get my Jews from earth back to glory. Right, yes. That's my goal. Amen. Mankind's goal didn't care nothing about the religion. All they cared about was establishing their political agenda. And in their manipulation, they forgot to destroy and take out of the book the vehicle mm -hmm. to get us back. <laughs> so everybody now that's going to try to find this new age religion and you don't know if this right and this right just keep on reading and as long as we can read about the church and his bride Amen. you're on your way on back Amen. just make sure you get in it Amen. Amen. now it was built up now on the apostles in Acts chapter 2 in the verses 42 the book says what? and they continue steadfastly and they continue steadfastly and the apostles the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in fellowship and breaking, breaking bread and in prayer and in prayer. Jump down to verse forty-seven. The book says what? Praising God, praising and God, favor. and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added and to the, the Lord day. added to the church daily, such as what should be should be saved. You see, salvation is linked to the vehicle that's taking you back to heaven. You see, the church don't save you. But you got to get in it so that because Christ is going to save the church. Now, if you get on the wrong plane going to England thinking you're going to Africa and you find, here's the beauty of it. You find out in time, oh, I'm at the wrong terminal. Where's the terminal that says Africa, in the airport, get you some help. Oh no ma'am, you're in the terminal that takes you to England. Go down, on down, see way down? If you look, it, it'll say Africa there. Now, you know, we would look foolish to argue with the person who's helping us to find the terminal that says Africa. When we go into the wrong terminal that says England and we're trying to get to Africa. This is how people look fussing and arguing with God and the man of God and the children of God. We are the airport folks that's telling them, no, that's the terminal down there for Africa. You need to go down there. The beauty is, is that you get the information before you board the plane. Amen. 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 And we are trying to get you the right direction so that you can board the right plane. Amen. I'm finna get ready to bring it down. But I had to get all of this over. Because the whole key is the salvation. Now, you ask the question. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. You have to ask the question, well, which church was it? Mm -hmm. right. At the time that statement was made, there wasn't but one church that the apostles even knew, understood. Mm -hmm. There was no Baptist, Catholic, Episcopalian, and stuff. There was, there was none of that. Right. That didn't come to years after the, what was written here in Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Right. Now, 
Let's see in our concluding verses, what did the apostles understand about the church that the people were being added to and saved? What did they understand? What church did they understand? And, and if we can find out what church that they understood, then it ought to be easy for us to understand. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. All right. Get from it now. Let's go back to Acts chapter 20. And the verse is 25. Acts chapter 20 and the verse is 25. The book says what? And now behold, and I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Read. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Paul. Paul said, listen to what he just said. Paul said, now, wherefore I want you to take to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. And I have not shunned to declare unto you all the mind of God. Okay, God, what is your mind? What is on your mind? He going to tell you what church is on God's mind. Right. Read. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. And to all the flock. And to all the flock. Over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. To feed the church of God. Baptist. Church of God. Methodist. Church of God. Catholic. Church of God. Episcopalian. Church of God. Jehovah's Witness. Church of God. Mormon. Church of God. Which he had purchased with his own blood. Now, what did the apostles understand? From the mind of God. As to what church those people needed to be in. Amen. They understood that it was the church of God. The church of Christ. Now. Get from it. In closing. Romans 16 and 16. Romans 16 and 16. See. If I was not a member of the church of Christ at this point. I'd be ready for the preacher to hurry up and get the preacher. So that I can hurry up and come give my hand to the preacher and give my heart to God. Come on with me. Because if I've been going this long, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 60, 70 years old, and did not know this information, I'd be running up here when the invitation song came on. Amen. Amen. Saying, Amen. brother, you told the God heaven truth. You read every bit of it from the book and you put it on the screen for us to see. You didn't say it. The book said it, Amen. and you had it read. Amen. I want to give my life to the Lord this day. I pray that we got somebody who want to give their life to the Lord. Amen. When I came to understand this, I couldn't help but get out of tradition and man-made religion and come on and give my life to the Lord. Amen. It was on a Wednesday night at a Bible class. I got up. Jackie said, oh, oh. I said, no, uh-uh, I got enough. I got enough knowledge to know. I went up and gave my hand to the preacher, took the, the, the uh, confession. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? I said, I do. They took me in that old building over there, took me around, put me in that, that old baptistry, took me down and brought me back up, and I've been glad ever since preaching the gospel of Christ, ever since baptizing I don't know how many people since. Amen. You ought to be glad to be getting this information today. And those that are on YouTube, you ought to be thanking God that somebody loved you enough to send you this, Amen. this preaching and sermon. Amen. Amen. See, some folk in the church, they don't love the Lord. They don't love him. Amen. But see, when you love him, you're going to make sure you take the time to live for it. You're going to make sure you take the time to learn. You're going to make sure you take the time to teach others. You're going to make sure you take the time to win other souls. But some people, all they want to do is go through a ritual and a routine. Get up, take a bath, brush their teeth, come show up for 30 minutes to an hour, hour and a half. Go back home and don't say nothing about the Lord the rest of the week. And mad to come back next Sunday. Preach. We got to be careful because a whole bunch of folks that has gotten baptized in hell, they're going to lift up their eyes. Right. See, so don't think that just because you're in the church of Christ, you got wings on going on in. Right. No, sir. And for those that are listening, and if you think that uh, 
People have told you if you're not a member of the Church of Christ, you're going to hell. Don't worry about it. It's going to be a heap of church, unfaithful Church of Christ member going there too. Come on with me. I'm trying to get in here and live for the man. Amen. Now let's bring this plane down. In Romans 16 and 16, the book says what? Salute one another with a holy kiss. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ. The churches you. of Christ salute you. Now, he's going to tell you, if you've never heard this before, where denominationalism going to come from. In the next verse, read. Now I beseech you, brethren. Now I beg of you, brethren. Mark them which cause division. Take notice of those that's going to come along and cause denominationalism. Contrary to the doctrine which ye have Contrary learned. Contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and, and avoid them. them. Read. For they that are such For serve they not. that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. But their own best. But their own interests. And by good words and fair speeches. By good words and fair speeches. They're going to come. Hold on. They're going to come talking good talk. They're going to come giving you good motivational lessons. They're going to come giving you some good mental health counseling and awareness. They're going to come give you some good advice to help you get over problems. They're going to come giving you some good stuff. All that's good in its place, but it don't take the place of the unadulterated word of God and the doctrine of Jesus Christ, him crucified. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Amen. Read this Deceiving in hearts of the simple. Deceiving the hearts of those that just don't know no better. That's that ain't That's it. almost get up close to it, just about it. That's it. That's it. The book is just right. Amen. Amen. If you're not a member of the Church of Christ, I'm going to say it and say it loud. You need to be. You need to be. If you're not a member, this is our evangelistic series, and I'm dealing with it. And if you can come, now listen, and I don't say this to be ugly, demoralizing, or any of that. If you can come prove that there's another church in this Bible that God spoke about that's pleasing to him, come prove it. You can't beat that. I don't care what title you have. I don't care what degree you have. I don't care if you, how many PhDs you have. If you can come and prove what I preached to be wrong today, come prove it. That's why when I learned the gospel, I obeyed it, and I got in it, and I thank God for being a member. Amen. And for members who are, have grown and gotten distracted, yeah. and they're out in the world doing their own thing, pray for them. Amen. Yes. That God will give them time to get their life together, because this thing going to be serious when they come out of those clouds. Yeah. It's going to be serious. Everybody playing now. See, they... they they haven't seen him come out the clouds yet. It's going to be a serious affair. Yes, you come to the Lord by hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and being baptized. Give me your hand. Give God your heart. And give your life to Jesus. While together we stand and sing, won't you come?